Okay, welcome. Welcome to another follow along video. Another video done by G Man Speaks TV that we're going to follow along to today. This was uploaded about two hours ago by G Man Speaks TV channel. So if you're new here and you don't know who G Man Speaks TV is, he's basically an Australian YouTuber that provides his thoughts, opinions, perspectives, and gives dating advice and elaborates on the modern day dating environment and some issues that men, men such as myself, himself, yourself, might be facing along the way out in the dating market as a single man, maybe a man that's just got out of a serious relationship or even a divorce. So without further ado, we'll let G-Man run the intro to this video. The title of it is, This is Why Men Should Not Pedestalize Women. Like I said, upload about two hours ago. We'll give it a like while we're uh, at it. Take it away. To get disrespect, right? When a woman does... Pardon. I don't know why it tends to do that. Let's take it from the top. G'day guys, welcome to G-Man Speaks. Today I'm taking a look at a video called The Simp Chronicles, How to Kill the Simp Inside by a YouTuber called Justin J. Original video link is in the description. Go check him out, give him a view, like, and comment. Let's get started. Available, right? But see, what's good guys? It's your boy Justin J coming to you with another car video. Let's cook, boys, let's cook. All right, The Simp Chronicles. Okay. What is a simp and how to kill the inner simp? All right, guys. When you're a simp, you're going to be going out of your way for women a lot, guys. You're going to be just trying to do the best job that you can do at making her see that you're... So, already to cut him off, he said to us, he said to me, this is my first time watching this video, what is a simp? So, I thought he was going to get into a definition. You know, he's kind of gone on a tangent. You'll find, if you're new here, that that's something that I rather... Uh, trend towards doing as well but i'll give a brief definition of what i think a simp is and simply put a simp is someone who prioritizes the woman in question over himself so in its entirety a man that prioritizes a woman over himself in his entirety her best option available right but see where you so how do guys do that so there's a multitude of ways that I've seen it done in the past. I wouldn't say I've overly simped in my life. I, I've been a, maybe a fake nice guy, so I know how easily that approach is. But a legitimate simp is something I don't think I tru truly have been. But I think what's so long and short of it is it, it's guys who legitimately are attracted to um, want a woman, in love with a woman essentially, or feel that feeling of love and they're so enamored with her, they'll literally do anything that she wants him to do without any expectation from the man that he's gonna receive anything uh, in return or doesn't return love, or if, it, or if she does, it's at a very surface level just to keep the guy hanging on. He basically defined it how I did, but he's elaborating it further. So it's like a more broader, well-defined definition and, and I roll with it. I am agreeing with G-Man. And especially with what he just said then, and he's still probably going to continue with his point, but yes, surface level. So he's doing everything. He's going out of his way. He's prioritizing, as I said, the woman over himself, the woman in question, and she's doing the bare minimum to keep him around. Mind you, if he stops doing what he's already doing, which is just about everything he can be doing. Potentially, that can be on the financial side of things, gift buying, constantly chasing her affection and attention. And she's doing the bare minimum to keep him around and she'll let him know when she's dissatisfied. So as soon as he drops the ball just by a little bit, she'll let him know about it. And he's not expecting overly much in return, just that little bit. That's all he needs to hang on. So that's my sort of broader take on the definition of simp, but we'll let G-Man round this out. I think he's spot on so far. Well, where a lot of women say they don't keep orbiters um, and hangers on on purpose, they're just floating around. <laughs> I have to pause. They all keep orbiters, all right? Women and men cannot be friends. They can have a good communicative professional relationship with one another, but you can't 
particularly be friends. I find it increasingly difficult to believe. If, mind you, it's an attractive woman, I think it's generally impossible to, to be friends with her. If, if you're a sexually active man, okay, you have a high enough libido to be functional, to be functioning. The woman is well kept, she's attractive, similar sort of age group. You can't run from it. You cannot deny that there's sexual attraction. And sooner or later, that sexual attraction will draw you to her. And if you're attractive as the man, she'll be drawn to you. Friendship? A long-term fruitful friendship with a man and a woman? If you can give me a real-world example in the comment section, yeah, I'll hear you out. I'm willing to be proven wrong. But somewhere along the lines, I truly believe that it would lead to sexual intercourse or a sexual encounter. Around waiting for their day in the sun. Oh, I think they actually do because they, they do breadcrumb a lot of guys knowing exactly what they're doing um, to be able to feed off them for attention or to, or to you know, get benefits, whether it's um, things bought for them, um, taken places, picked up in the middle of the night from nightclubs, help with moving, Fixing, going over, fixing things if you're handy, you know, fixing taps, you know, putting together um, furniture for them, all sort of bullshit like. Sometimes women just want you to listen. So I've had that. You're a good listener and they will quite literally turn to you just for that, for them to be heard, for you to hear them out. Maybe they want your particular perspective because you hold a certain degree of intelligence to be able to elaborate and explain a situation to a woman and she'll use you for that. She might not even think she's using you. And I'm not here saying that I've been used. I've been in that situation and I acknowledge that it might be a situation where I might be potentially used, but I still chose to do that. Okay. Because I cared for the person. I cared for him genuinely. And I thought it's not overly difficult for me to give advice as you can see it's not overly hard for me to be effective with communication so if i can make someone's day if i can help them out a little bit i don't per se feel like i'm being used so there are those sort of situations where a woman might just simply turn to you momentarily to try and get something out of you that you know you're a nice guy you're showing her that you'll be a great boyfriend but sure it's okay to do those things if you're actually her boyfriend but when you're not, and she's probably seen other dudes and you're going and doing it. Um... Yeah, yeah. So without harping on now way too much, if she's not your girlfriend, what are you even doing, fella? Do not go out of your way to prioritize a woman that if you don't have it established that you two are in a relationship with one another, that you are exclusive, that she's only seeing you, not that you will truly ever know, but I'm saying if you haven't even communicated to one another that you are exclusive and that you're in a monogamous relationship, if that fact isn't established, do not bend over backwards for one rickety tick tick for that woman in question. And women will ultimately start saying that they can turn to you to get something out of you and you're on call, you're on tap. Like G-Man said, Oh, need a pipe fixed. I know he's on call. Oh, I got something to communicate. I need something to talk about right now. I don't feel like I can really talk about this with my girlfriends, but he's usually got pretty good insight. He's usually got a pretty good perspective on things. Yeah, I'd like him to shed some light on that situation. If you're not in a relationship and if you only care because you want to gain this woman's approval, if you only care for that reason, because there's a difference between actually genuinely caring. You genuinely care, but you have to sit down with yourself and have this conversation. Why do I genuinely care about this woman? Do I have feelings for her because of, say, something she has given me in the past? I've mentioned this in one of my previous videos where I've had an ex-girlfriend actually transfer me $500 when I was on Centrelink. For those of you who don't know what Centrelink is, basically you're on the doll. Basically, you're on like a government handout, right? You're unemployed. You're on the bare minimum government handout. So I had my ex-girlfriend, my ex-partner transfer me money when I was in that sort of situation. That's what I'm saying. If you can genuinely take some things away from it, 
I'm not saying you always have to receive things either, but that's an example of, okay, this woman has shown that she cares about me. She's shown that she's interested in me. She's actually physically done something to help me out in a rather tough spot. And she's not even judging me for it. She's actively helping me out. So now I've got pretext to care about this person. So I will also go out of my way, whether it's overly excessive whether it's overly much but if i feel i can do something to help this person I'll, I'll help them because i genuinely care i genuinely feel something for them but if you're sitting down and having this conversation you're thinking i'm chasing tail i'm chasing tail because i want to get in this girl's pants and that's all you really want that's the kind of conversation you have with yourself that's the primary driving factor as to why you're doing all this stuff coming up you know buying boxes of chocolates flowers take poor son okay she will smell that a mile away. And sometimes women won't recognize why you're doing it. They, they won't truly understand that you're doing it out of the goodness of your heart, that you find them important. Sometimes they may falsely interpret that, <laughs> look at him, he's simping. It might not be the case, but I'll always preach on my channel, you know, be true to yourself. Be genuine within yourself. So when you do something good, and this is whether for it's a man or a woman, don't expect anything in return. It's just like the rule with loaning money. When you loan money, substantial amount, whatnot, it'd be good if you got it back, if you set that as the terms of a loan. But when you lend money, golden rule, don't expect to get it back. Without ever seeing anything in return, well, I think that means you're a simp. And I think a lot of guys too, how they fall into that trap, it's like a sunk cost fallacy. It's like you spend all this time working on this chick. So you think you're working on her, you think you're working her down, you think you're, you're smooth, you're being a player. Um, you're in there, you come up with this strategy on how to show her and demonstrate to her, you know, it's almost like a case study for a job interview, how much of a good guy you are thinking that she's gonna think that you're awesome. But it, what a lot of guys don't know, I understand is they don't, if they're not attracted to you, they don't give a shit about all the things you got. Exactly. So all the things that you're doing, trying to gain her attention, her approval, her validation. Short term, it probably won't even get you laid. But long term, it definitely won't matter. Look at, look at, look at Jeff Bezos as an example that just came to mind. Or most recently I saw an article about Ben Affleck. World's your oyster. Money is not a facet. Even they can't hold down a long-term relationship, marriage. So, leading with your money is something that G-Man and I have discussed in previous videos. That's, that's all fleeting and you aren't gonna make a woman admire or appreciate you if your front foot is dollar bills. Short-term, maybe. Long-term, no way. That doesn't uh, begin to form and hold attraction or increase your value. Going to do for them that isn't going to make them like you. That's just the reality of it, and it's a painful realization for a lot of men who get overly invested for long periods of time, um, pandering to women. Well, it's also because men just genuinely are more loyal, as I've said in another video too. Men generally fall in love quicker, love deeper, and with women it's it's rather temporary, which is why so many, so often of the time they need to be constantly stimulated, they constantly want to see progress, and yes, as a man you should always constantly strive for a degree of progress in whatever. Where it might become a problem is if you're chasing progress in something that say she doesn't necessarily understand or respect, so then she might think, well this is a total waste of time. She might think that you're not accomplishing anything. Because say you're interested in some sort of a field. Say you are recording video games. You're, you're commentating on video games. You're trying to be a YouTuber. You're doing that in your spare time. You're doing that day to day. She looks at that and thinks, what a damn waste of time that is. He's not, he's not getting anywhere. He's not achieving anything. Now, I'm not saying that I've had that happen to me, but I'm just using that as per se an example where if she doesn't understand what it is that you're chasing, what it is that you're trying to achieve, whether you are working from home and 
you're working from your phone, whatever it is that you may be doing. But because she's not really seeing that you're doing anything, and it's not particularly amounting to anything, she might just not understand and she might think, well, yeah, he's lazy. He's not particularly chasing anything. He's not trying to level up. She get, she get pretty bored, turned off, dry up rather quick when that becomes yeah, a situation, a seed that gets planted in her mind. I've been thinking that one day she's going to just see and realize what she has and pick him and it's going to be like the movies, you know? You go wrong when you do that is a woman already knows like, okay, have you ever had a woman say something to you like, you know, you would be the perfect husband. Like if we're still single in 10 years, like <laughs> you'll make the... No. You will be... No. Perfect husband. Guys, that shit is completely beta. It's completely corny for you to even sit there and accept a woman telling you anything near that or anything like that, guys. Never accept that shit, right? So... Does he mean... If a woman says you would make the perfect husband, but keeps you as an orbiter, keeps you in the friend zone, that's beta. I suppose it's hard for me to fathom, visualize, since I've never heard those words uttered to me. Uh, you would make the perfect husband. Yeah, I suppose you'd lead on with, well, if you, of course, feel it within yourself, if you look at her and think she'd make a good wife, then you could say, well, why do you say that? And why don't, why don't you just marry me? <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, you would ask, well, then why, why don't we get married if, if you are interested in the woman? That, that, that's a weird one. I've honestly never heard that said to me or, or a friend having been on the receiving end of something like that. Oh, what a simple... Oh, I've actually um, know of guys that have said that to me. Guy I used to work with had this massive crush on this chick and he'd always talk about it. I always used to debate if she was even bloody real or not. I never saw her or anything like that. But he'd go on about her and he goes to me, me and her have an agreement. And this was years ago. I'm talking like almost 20 years ago. We're both not married by 30. She said she'll marry me. And he was like, that is a good deal. Like, he was so ecstatic about that. And I'm just like, sounds like the shittest deal I've ever heard. But hey, man, if that keeps you going uh, in life, good for you. You're good. Like, I try to say to him, you know, uh, sounds like the shit is still ever why you accepting that. Um, you know, to keep you on the hook for bloody 10 years with the, think, with the thought that you're going to marry her while she just goes and gets absolutely guts busted in the back of car parks. <laughs> 10 years? <laughs> okay. Simple, very short uh, sentence structured advice. Do not pursue a woman for longer than a fortnight without getting into a relationship with her. And within about two years, two years, maybe the upper limit, you will know whether this woman is worth marrying or not. I'm not saying get married within two years, but have the answer of if this woman is worth marrying within two years. But if you're just starting out You've got a woman in mind in sight. Make it known, shoot your shot, and get it all over and done with. Talk it, talk it through with your mates if you have to, with your lifestyle coach, dating coach, psychologist, counselor, your father, your mother, your sister, your brother. Okay, if that's what you have to do to talk it out, if you feel like someone can give you some positive, constructive feedback, get it all done, shoot your shot within a fortnight. Don't make it something that drags on for 10 damn years, brother. If she found that out, she will be scared of you. Forever. She will think that's the creepiest thing and just about every other woman that you might come across in your life. Don't let that sort of truth come out. That you've got some girl on your mind for an excessive period of time. And everything over two weeks is ex excessive. I'm not saying you can't have those feelings, but... If you've shot your shot, she shut you down, you're going to have to let those feelings go. And if you haven't shot your shot within two weeks, you just keep going around to your guy friends, like I said, relatives, etc. And you just keep bringing her up, talking about it, telling other people, man, you can't get her out of your head. And you haven't made any sort of attempt to communicate that with her. Brother. I wouldn't want to be the girl personally finding out that this dude has been eyeing me off for X amount of weeks, months, years. 
and he hasn't made an approach, and when he does make an approach at that point, if you know that background information, you're going to think something's really weird and off with this guy. Okay, he's, 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 you're already going to know as a woman that he's completely and utterly lacking any sort of self-confidence and self-worth. But guys do it. Guys do it because they think, once again, and always gone about this, and it's a very interesting thing. It is social programming by the media. Different forms. You've got Hollywood. Um, you've got books. You've got TV shows about the nice girl and she has like, you know, the shitty boyfriend and then she also has a friend there and the friend there is hanging in there and then she finally realises at the end that she dumps the shit boyfriend um, and goes out with the best friend and all of a sudden they love each other uh, and it's happy days and life is going... Yeah, it's like every single teen drama that I even grew up watching from your One Tree Hills to your The OCs. Uh, never Back Down for some reason just came to mind when it's a bit like that, the shit boyfriend. Ultimately, you realise... Oh, wow, the nice guy came along and I just realized now after all this time when the nice guy showed up that my boyfriend is shit and I'm going to go with the nice guy. Yeah, those kind of stories do exist. As a man, don't don't take them on board and use them as any sort of reference or guidance that this is reality. I never have. I've, I, I just shot off some shows and movies where that happens, but in no way is that indicative of, of real life. And if she does leave her quote unquote shit boyfriend for you you know say you the nice guy that just goes to show how unstable in a relationship she is how she's willing to be in a toxic relationship and looking for a way out and now it just comes full circle to what i've pretty much always been saying in my last couple of videos that women are always looking for the grass greener on the other side she'll probably just end up doing that to you, okay? At some point, you just might not be that nice guy that she needs you to be on that particular day. Bye-bye. It's going to be perfect until the day they die because she finally realizes, wow, I think I love this man, you know? That doesn't happen in real life. It never does. It isn't going to be happy ever after. You're going to get used up. You're going to get chewed up. She doesn't truly love you, respect you, and you're going to get spat out somewhere down the line or you're going to hate your life. You're going to be a Yo, for, for a woman to love you, she has to respect you. That That's like a precursor, all right? It's like... Uh, nah, it doesn't matter. I was going to go into pharmacology. NAD plus is a precursor to NMN. <laughs> but it's respect is a precursor to, to, to love for a woman. And it, in a way, it is for a man as well. If you, if you don't respect your woman, you can find it difficult to love her. But... It's not an essential precursor. Men can still fall in love with women that they don't particularly, I would say, because it's a different definition for a man. For, for a man, it's a slightly different definition of, of respect. Men don't generally lean towards that way because why I say it's different is because to respect someone, you need to listen to what they have to say. You need to take it on board. You need to comprehend what it is that they're telling you when it comes to say decision making now a man he generally doesn't need a woman's opinion to make constructive solid strong decisions in his life he'll generally turn to other men maybe his father he's not going to turn to his partner necessarily for the final word in in a decision being made Again, it'll be slightly different if, say, your partner is involved in the decision. For example, she needs to relocate or it affects your children that you may already have. I'm not saying don't take on your partner's opinion ever in the future. But if it's, a, if it's the sort of decision, okay, that affects your life primarily, as a man, you're not going to turn to your woman, your partner, to help you make that decision. Whereas a woman, that's the only man she should be turning to. So her husband, her boyfriend, her significant other, that's the only man she should be turning to. Not even her friends. She loves him. Like I said, the precursor, she respects him. She will go seek out his advice and his advice only to help her make a decision. And why? She starts going to her friends, her female friends, coming back to what I said about men and women can't truly be friends. So she's going to go to her female friends for advice. 
she's going to get emotional advice. She's not going to get logic. She's not going to get reason. She's not going to get wisdom. All that can only come from a man. Married to a chick who never really wanted to be with you in the first place, it doesn't respect you. Uh, and you're getting really nothing out of a life of servitude. Is a simp is a guy who puts a woman before himself, guys, to the point where it's sickening. And she knows that it's sickening. She even wants to vomit on herself sometimes, right? Bingo. So it really doesn't get you anywhere with women. And at the end of the day, if the woman does choose you at the end of the day, just know you're about to suffer, guys. Let me give you an example. One time Hold I on. made this delivery, right? And this guy came to the door, but he didn't have the money to pay for the food. So he went and got his wife, right? And she came with them, like with her purse to grab the money. So when she's giving me the money, she's like, did they apply the coupon? And I'm like, no, they didn't. I'm sorry. It's right here. It's not here. She started wigging out. Oh my God, I can't believe they didn't. And he was just like, babe, calm down. Shut up. Shut up. Don't you even talk to me. Don't tell me what to do. He was just looking back at me like, you know, super embarrassed, right? Yeah, so if a woman disrespects you in private is bad enough, but if she disrespects you in public, I'm not finding the right word for it, and I'm pausing for so long because I wanted to say that's a red flag, but it's beyond a red flag. If she's outright disrespecting you in public, it means she has no respect for you, it means she doesn't love you, it means there's absolute futility in this relationship moving forward. The only, only reason I can find, the only salvation in that sort of situation is if she takes pause, acknowledges her behavior, and apologizes to you within about five minutes. Because sometimes I can understand emotions get the better of people, especially women. Coming back to what I said about men being reasonable, logical, wise. Women are primarily emotionally driven. So I can understand when that may happen. She might have not lost total respect for you, but like I said, she takes pause and she apologizes within about five minutes. If she doesn't, if she downplays it, and if she tries to justify it, you got to call time. That's exactly what I'm... And, that's it. and, he, and once again, as I say, guys putting themselves in a prison of their own creation. I say this all the time. And that's my saying, guys. I'm going to fucking coin that. I don't know if anyone else says it, but I've legitimately have always said that. We make all the worst decisions in picking women. A lot of guys will just take the only woman that will take them. Just to, just to think that they have somebody. And I can understand why men do it, because there's a scarcity involved with the competitive landscape of landing a woman that you want to be with. And so guys will get a sniff, though. A woman will finally come around, or you can tell if she's sort of half interested. You lock, lock onto that. You lay the, lay the special treatment, the royal treatment. You hand her everything. You hand her commitment. You hand her babies. You buy her a house. You get her a car on finance. You do all that sort of stuff. And just like this guy is saying through his example, you get browbeaten. Become a beast of burden. You're working, working, working. And what are you doing You with all your pay? Either she's spending a lot of it on Amazon deliveries, um, bullshit, any other bullshit, clothes. <laughs> yeah, take note of that. And when you're really starting out a relationship, I think my perspective is you just should, you should have your own money. Yes, you can buy things for the other person. Time to time, surprise them, spoil them. You know, you share things. You even go out of your way explicitly to get something for them. G-Man's going way up top with buying houses and cars. If you got the means, but if it's really setting you back, if you're going way out of your way to, to provide a lavishery like that, you've gone too far in my mind. Now, using myself as an example, I was actually, you could say, the Amazon delivery guy in this sort of situation. So I owned more pairs of shoes, more clothes. I was buying suits and ties and not your budget friendly ones either. Like rather uh, exclusive, expensive. So I was the, the delivery 
recipient for a large majority of the time. Now, where the good thing was in my relationship was I wasn't particularly criticized for it. We did have this sort of mutual understanding that, well, it's my money. And since we're going halves for things like rent for utilities, as long as you come up with your half, all's fair. Skin in the game. And I would even say that sometimes I was also on the receiving end of more, say, gifts, more pleasantries. I was the one even being spoiled, per se, more than I was spoiling her. But as a man now, coming back to, say, potentially your situation, if you're finding that time and time again, it's you giving her handouts, you providing... That might be okay, but you do have to sit down with yourself and ask the question of what are you getting in return? Are you just getting, say, the pleasantry of her company? And that's really the extent of it. What do you want? What more is it that you want? There must be something than the sex, than the intimacy, than just having that person's warmth, their body next to you at night. Someone to... Spend time with on a Sunday afternoon, laugh with, go for a walk with, sit down at a cafe with. Surely you want something more out of this, right? I'm not saying break up, but I'm saying think about it. What more do you want and are you getting it? And what are you currently giving? What do you feel that you're putting into this? In exchange for what? What's being given to you in return? Like I said, is she even respecting you for what you do for her? Does she love you then? Or are you noticing that she's only putting a smile on her face and maybe you're getting that bare minimum back after you apply a heavy dose of, say, finances to spoil her, to lavish her, to provide for her, to make her life better? Is she doing what G-Man's saying, getting on Amazon, buying things for herself. When she goes out shopping, is she primarily also serving herself? You have to look at your own situation, evaluate, because a relationship really is a transaction between two people, okay? I'm not really trying to minuscule it and compact it in that sort of light. That is just transaction based. Okay, there's no love, there's no emotion, there's no feelings. I'm talking about it very bleakly, black and white. But at its core, it really is that. You're exchanging something, you're, you're fulfilling one another in a certain way. So, as a man, you also have to do more as well. So now I'm kind of playing devil's advocate, and now I'm going to say criticize men a little bit too. You can't just expect to lead and progress and move a relationship forward and be fulfilling to a woman with just your wallet time and time again if you're that guy. So if everything you're giving her is financially based, if you're funding her Amazon, you're funding her a lavish lifestyle, you're giving her a car, a nice house to live in and you're not asking any rent, you might think that that's enough. Like I said with Jeff Bezos earlier in the video, it's not particularly enough. Now, I'm not going to make an argument now for whether that's fair or not, but I'm just telling you that that's a reality. You've got to have some substance about it. You've got to have character. Sometimes you've got to be the good boy. Sometimes you've got to be the bad guy. You've got to excite her. She's got to look at you, look at your relationship with you and feel something new almost every day. Otherwise, it will become stale. Even money, even Lamborghinis, 10 fucking bedroom, lavish estate mansions. Sooner or later, it will just become stale if that's all it is. You have to stimulate her every day and again i'm not now going to make an argument whether that's right or not that's just natural that's just the nature the way that women are that's why i said if she doesn't understand what it is that you're doing even to earn money she'll be turned off by it doesn't matter how much money you might have or how much money you might be earning sooner or later that will 
dry her out, wear her down, and she'll look for, again, greener patch of grass on the other side. So, you always got to be evolving, developing, changing as a man if you want to keep something going long term. And on her end, she's just got to be an understanding woman. That's why sometimes even women settle. Sometimes even women settle. Women might not be explicitly happy in a relationship, but they'll keep it going. They'll keep it alive. Sometimes it's for the sake of the children. Other times because they don't want to look bad to their, say, family. Because the man really is working his ass off, hypothetically, to provide for her, to fund her. And well, she can't she can't just divorce this man. And it's also because uh, she's, she's she has got it comfortably. Okay, she has got it good and she thinks twice about, I don't want to sabotage this. But her walls might be completely dry. And she's looking at the pool boy, all right? <laughs> to use that cliche, she is looking at that rip jack pool boy on fucking minimum wage. And she licking her lips and he's stimulating her. He's turning her on. Dead set. And it doesn't matter that she's in one of the 10 bedrooms in the lavish estate. The pool boy is, is getting her going, is revving her motor, is stimulating her senses. And you're no longer doing that. And you might think, she ain't going to get better than this. You best believe that this, no matter what your situation in life is as a man, there's always something that you might not be giving. Even if you think you're giving everything. It's just the nature of women. Uh, nights out, uh, still having dinners with the girls and all that sort of stuff. Uh, brunches that you're not invited to, you don't go to. You're giving her all this money. For all this sort of shit so you're working really you're paying a very high subscription fee to be married to a woman who doesn't want to be married to you and a lot of these women that end up marrying these sort of guys under these arrangements they're cheating on they're prolifically cheating on them because they don't give a shit about the dude they couldn't care there is no level of regret um or, or, or conscience in any way and as i've told you guys in some a lot of my some of my other previous videos back i used to womanize a lot and through my womanizing days, and I'm talking like 20 years on and off here with relationships, but really most of my life, I was doing that, chasing women. That was like my objective. And the amount of times I've been with women and then you find out after that they're either married, long-term relationship, or just have a boyfriend or whatever it is, so they don't really respect. Yeah, it's quite astonishing. Um, you just think it wouldn't happen and you think it might be one in a bloody lifetime occurrence. No, no, very, very common, um, especially on dating apps. I know that scares people and guys hate hearing that, but it's the raw truth. And I've, and I've said this on other videos, copped a little bit of backlash about it in the past. And it's not like I went and hunted these women knowing their situations. Women are very sneaky. They can be sneaky with their husbands to do this. They're sneaky with the men that they do it with. And they also put the men that they're doing it with in bad situations because then they get a simp husband who then the woman will say, oh, he forced me into it. And the guy goes to your house with a shotgun, blows you away when you open the front door. So. If your woman cheats on you and you find out about it, you show just how much of an idiot you are if you take issue with the man that she's cheating on you with. I'm willing to bank the majority of the time the other guy doesn't even know that you're in the picture. Of course, if you're married, she's still wearing her ring he knows. I can't quote it word for word. But in the Bible it says, you're both going to hell. It's a deadly sin indeed. But even then, it ain't for you to put that man in hell. He'll get there on his own terms. And it's not even your place to lay hands on the woman. Be better than that. If you can prove it. And like I said, I'm not against prenups anymore. Use it. Leave her with nothing. A lot of these women that have these sort of guys, they just trash them their whole life. They extract benefits and live a double life. 
you get a lot of people say oh no it's very negative i'm not saying it's all women i'm saying it's a lot of women who are married and unsatisfied like once again the number of women that i even went out with on dates um post my separation and divorce uh, and who had been around a similar age and had marriages and separations and all that and told me that they had affairs like like literally just told me because they were trying to say and justify it somehow telling me on the first or second date they've had affairs like i wasn't going to run for the hills but telling me because they weren't getting what they want and they were victimized in a loveless relationship that they were trapped in everyone who who told me something like that it was the same story so keep your eyes open guys especially you guys who are simping this is what if a woman does accept you this is what you're going to get and i told another story i can ramble on about this forever a, a, a good friend of mine um i did a video it's called a, a brutally true australian stories guys take a look at it it's about cheating wives it's four guys i know very well who will probably fall into the simp category um into the pedestalization pedestalization sort of category and all of them got ripped ripped apart ripped to shreds lives destroyed go listen to those stories if you want some true stories things guys i know they're in my like pretty close network nothing good comes out of it what i'm talking about right there guys you're only going to get disrespect right when a woman doesn't like when a woman doesn't see you as her like best option or the number one guys no walk away yep. you have to kill that inner beta kill the inner simp guys because what the inner simp is going to do is have you acting off of emotion moving like a woman and guys it will just lead you to your own demise guys Spot i on. broke someone's jaw over a female guys did that stop her from you know having sex with other dudes and being a 304 no not at all guys it did not do anything it just made me go psycho and now when i look back on it that chick got pregnant by a complete bozo and now i'm that dude guys kill the simp straight like that kill it before it kills you love that that's a really good saying but once again another story a guy who was a former a uh, guy who pedestalized women it looks like a, a, a well put together guy fit maybe he wasn't then maybe he's obviously found himself maybe jim and all that gotten fit changed his life like a lot of guys do once they get you know dragged through the mud dragged through the coals dragged over the broken glass by women lives destroyed just on that note you only get dragged through the coals mud and glass as much as you allow the woman to do that to you it really is as much as you allowed it. It boils down to it being your fault you didn't sign a prenuptial agreement. It boils down to the fact that you chose to fund her lifestyle. You chose to buy her lavish cars, holidays, put her up in a nice house. Any house for that matter since they're so expensive nowadays. But she didn't have a gun to your head to do all that. And she, if there's kids involved didn't extract the semen from your balls you got her pregnant if that's the case so there's a degree of responsibility as well as a man and there's a certain amount that you have to protect yourself to not be in a vulnerable situation to have everything taken from you or as was just said being dragged through mud coal dirt glass many many men they will never admit it to you even if they to their friends um or you know um to wider society they come across as an alpha still these these behaviors are ingrained in them by society be super nice be super agreeable whatever you want whatever you want baby whatever wants yours blah 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 and those guys, even to the outside world, they're, they're fit, they go to the gym, they might be good in their jobs, they get cheated on. They get fucked over with Bryce's, with Chad's, Dino's. What did I just say about the pool boy? The pool boy example. Vicky and Ray Ray's. Tyrone's. Wherever you live. Juan. Sergio. The scuba diver instructor, you know? The, the gym trainer yes if you're not stimulating her you best believe someone out there who she might already be crossing paths with is and you th and, you, and they'll never admit it and they find out about it but they'll never tell anybody about it so a lot of that stuff goes under the rug 
Anyway, guys, look around halfway through. Um, if you're enjoying the content, please sub to the channel. Um, going for 8,000. If you have got this far, surely there's something that you appreciated about this video. So a like does also help me out. Go check out G-Man, even if you're watching this for the first time so you don't want to re-watch G-Man's video, you do him a great service by clicking like as well. It just basically lets me know that you appreciated what you heard, what you saw, and leaving a comment, you know, being elaborate as to what you might want to see in the future, or what you agreed with, maybe even disagreed with, also lets us have a healthy discussion down in that section. So, so if you enjoy it, give us a like subscribe and comment and guys really help me out especially video shoot at the end that's what youtube values um and that's what gets me put out to more people and if you do want to check out my patreon link in the description as well but no pressure there my videos are so long guys let me give you another example right on this i don't expect anyone to really watch it through to the end but if you do based sometimes i can understand it takes a significant amount of patience and attentiveness to get to the end of mine Pimp shit. You will fuck with a girl who does not respect you just for the simple fact that she's having sex with you. Let me give you a story, right? Another Colombian chick story. So this is a Colombian chick, right? Super gorgeous, right? But I know she's a 304, but I'm letting certain things slide and acting like I don't care, even though I do care, right? So I made my move. We hooked up one night. She's like, yo, I got to go home, but let's make this happen tomorrow. So the next day comes, we make it happen guys this chick she was fired so when everything is said and done she's looking at me like so where do you see this going like what do you want from this and i'm just like super excited heart beating super fast on some simp shit i'm just like you know i'm trying to be with you if you want to be with me and she's like <laughs> that's cute i don't do relationships <laughs> then sinks her head into my chest looks up at me and whispers i'm sorry you caught feelings and then goes back to cuddling in my chest. And no, 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 guys. Not like cuddling me like I want to be wrapped. I disagree with him slightly. I don't think it's simp shit. It just comes back to what I've said full circle time and time again now about men not only catch feelings quicker, they fall in love deeper and harder. I don't think that's simp shit. Yeah, being true to yourself it's what you do with those feelings that becomes simp shit. But to initially feel them and then to... The way I see it, he said it like it is. He caught feelings, he let her know about it. He didn't get made into a simp. He's a simp now if he sees her again. If he lays there, continues to lay there cuddling with thoughts racing through his mind. As opposed to just... Alright, well... I hit it. Walls were good. Since you're not after anything else, don't be sorry that I caught feelings. I'm proud of my feelings. I embrace my feelings and who the fuck I am. Since clearly you don't know who the fuck you are or what you want, I'm out. Goodbye. In your strong arms right now. It was more of a cuddle like, I'm sorry I had to break your heart, simp. Guys, I will never forget that shit. I will never, ever, ever, ever forget that shit. That wasn't even too bad, but a lot of guys um, get that. No, it wasn't too bad. And like I said, uh, he's, I don't think he's calling himself simp by the right definition. How would you... That could happen to anyone. That could happen to anyone. Simping is like... He even said, he, he defined it the way I beat him to the punch. Where you go out of your way, where you prioritize the woman. He didn't do any of that. He didn't prioritize the woman. He just had sex with this woman. And he said he was interested in pursuing a relationship and she shut it down. Terrible example, really. But I, I like this guy. Let's just keep rolling with it. But that's not a very good example of, of, of simping. And I don't think he should hold himself in such regard or such regret that I remember it to this day that it's bottled up inside. It's it's not not a favorable example to, to hold against yourself as you know as a cross that that you're a simp. No, I don't agree with him. Egg, uh, guts, hearts, absolutely ripped out. Like have you seen Indiana Jones? I think it's Temple of Doom, and <laughs> the dude rips the guy's 
heart out and he's, he's the guy shows it to the guy and he's like staring at it and it's still pumping as it happens to a lot of dudes that's why a lot of guys go to red pill black pill content because <clears throat> they have a really bad experience they feel a really negative sort of way um, and they start looking for answers and maybe sometimes they go to the extreme because they've been hurt so badly um, but yeah I think women can be very very cruel um, to men be very very nasty to men and can do some long lasting damage with the things that they say and they do especially to the nice guy or simp is what people call them I know I've made fun of simps in my previous videos um, you know like the only cans ones but I can understand the nice guys who think it's a winning strategy to put women in front of them yeah put up with so much bullshit like my, my mate Larry alright I don't think I've told you guys this story my mate Larry who I always tell you about in all my previous videos a really good guy my, probably my best mate really best guy if I could say from an actual man being a man and being someone with integrity and morals far better man than what I am like I, I, I truly mean that but he gets just absolutely destroyed by every chick he goes out with so he was previously married um, wife, wife of like 20 years cheated on him with some dude she worked with and look that was the only time she got caught it would have been going on for years and years and years with different men and just so anyway he had a horrible experience almost ended up in a uh, mental institution like I've told this story a number of times like his friends took him there because I worried about him so he had some good friends who were worried and they didn't know what to do with him because they didn't want him to do anything uh, bad to himself um, they took him there and they were going to literally admit him and he started crying and screaming like that's how, that's how a woman and women can push men to ruin their life but what does he do after that he just learns he learned nothing he learned nothing I'm not saying men when they go through bad experiences should never see women again I never get on with women again you need just to be very careful because now you've learned you've been burnt bad you, 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 you've seen the worst of life and divorces and bad breakups and heartbreak is probably the worst thing that many men will ever go through most painful emotional pain you'll ever have that takes a long time to get over so once you get through that you've got to be a, lot, a bit more careful right be more careful about who you're letting into your life I would interchange careful with having protective barriers in place now i don't mean that well let's just say a feminine definition of put walls up no continue to be your authentic self whatever that may be if your authentic self is being an open guy a caring guy an affectionate guy i don't think that that's simping you're being true to your nature and i will always just encourage men to be true to their nature and not to change and try and become let's just say the societal stereotypical definition of an alpha male i don't give a fuck man chad all right dino down the road be yourself whoever that may be but have have protective measures i think is a good word for it in place all right which means being able to read the signs a bit like the red flags video that i just previously did to heed her red flags so not necessarily walls up but have protective measures in place so you don't get scolded again and get dragged okay so you can acknowledge ahead of time where things aren't going right where you take note of things that okay this is starting to now head into a direction i don't want to be going in if you feel like you can communicate those things with this person you should if you don't feel like you can or if you try and she shuts it down Again, you have to sit down with yourself or perhaps another gentleman, a friend, your father, discuss with them your thoughts, have an open discussion with someone to, to really assess what it is that you're time and time again putting into this and not just financially putting in, I also mean nervous energy, emotions, pardon, are you losing sleep over this? All right, is it keeping you up at night? Is it keeping you on edge, anxious? Do you find yourself constantly bickering at yourself, thinking about this person, this situation that you're now in, timelessly? Is it the first thought that enters your mind? Are you dreaming about it even? And then what's all being reciprocated in return? Is this now worthwhile when you take all that into account? 
I don't agree with no girlfriends ever again and none of that sort of stuff, but you need to be careful. Like one in a hundred is girlfriend material. That's my perfect, that's my view. I've said it all the time, girls of dating apps, girls that you go out with. One in a hundred is probably girlfriend material. And even less than that, probably marriage material that'll actually last and be good for you. But regardless of women, you always going to be putting up bullshit regardless of how good they are, but it's the level of bullshit that you put up with. But back onto that, sorry, I'm ranting. I can't help it. I get- no, 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 you're not ranting. Because there will be levels of bullshit that you will put up with. And that's what I also mean with compromise. You're just going to have to take that. I don't believe, again, in this stoic male attitude, chat, chat attitude of, I just shut bullshit down straight away. All right, there's no bullshit in my life. I put my woman in her place. No matter who you are, no matter who she is. Like I said, Jeff Bezos, you think he, he's immune to having dealt with bullshit? He created fucking Amazon. I bet his wife played no part in it. You think he didn't deal with bullshit until they got divorced? Ben Affleck didn't deal with bullshit. So yes, you will deal with bullshit. It's just a part of being in a relationship, in a marriage. You aren't going to be able to shut it down as quick as you think you might. And even women that are totally dependent on you, on your income. Even them. Like I use the pool boy analogy, even then, if you aren't exciting them, they'll, they'll, they'll look at that pool boy regardless. <laughs> Don't think that there's women out there who won't risk it all. Just to get a buzz, alright? Just to try something new they'll they'll risk it all all over the world yes men can do it too but women will end marriages break up families it's statistically proven that women do it more than men in just about every nationality especially every nationality in the western world they'll risk it all for that stimulus for that new experience She'll risk it all for Dino if, if, if he's turning on the waterworks. You can hate me for it and disagree. If you disagree, leave it in the comments why you disagree. Give me your true to life example. But that's the order of nature. That's the way things work. Get charged up over this. But good old Larry. He goes out with any girl that blows over, like it's like a paper bag that lands on his lap and he grabs on, he latches on, right? The first girl on dating app that gives him any attention, he goes all in. Even though he says to me the whole time, nah, nah, I'm not that interested, it's just going to be a short-term thing. Next thing you know, three months later, she's ripped his guts out, she's ripped his heart out, thrown it on the ground, discarded him, blocked and deleted him, whatever it is. And these are all single mums. All these are single mums or, or chicks that are like 40, early 40s, um, who've got some serious issues of dating apps, who've never been married or anything like that, um, that are just like walking red flags, they just fucking smash him because he's soft. And do you think he's learning? No. Do you think he's, he'll never learn. This will keep on happening his whole life. Regardless, he does watch a lot of this content. He knows about my channel. Um, he watches other men's channels that might be even more extreme than me. Does he learn anything? No, he hears it. He tells me he's... He's a red pillar and all he's not but he knows this stuff he listens to it but the behaviors and, and knowing about the world and knowing how to improve yourself doesn't happen again and protect yourself many men don't learn and so what i'm trying to say is simps can either improve or they'll stay like a super nice guy simp the whole life you can be a super nice guy simp right minus the simp perhaps but you can be a super nice guy you can be a nice guy Okay, you can be a nice guy and be a confident guy. You can be a nice guy and a caring guy. You can be a nice guy and be a masculine guy and then embody all those previous things that I just said. So don't think that nice guy correlates, translates to simp. Be a versatile man. Be a complete man. Be the best version of yourself that you are. Stay true to your character, to your core values and beliefs. And if that means that you are a nice guy, that you're a nice person, that you're a good man, good human being. Don't deter from that because you think, well, they finish last, they don't get women. 
I don't know. Confidence in general within yourself comes from competence. And that usually comes from trial and error, from failure. You failed as a nice guy. Take note of where it is that you failed, where it is that you failed along the way. And I'm not saying stop now being a nice guy because that led to failure. Just address what specifically caused that to happen. What might have caused that breakdown in that relationship? Okay. Where is it that there was a turning point where you started now being used as opposed to having reciprocation from her to make it a two-way street? They make a decision, I think. It's not a hard decision to make. You understand me, guys? You understand how serious this is? Moments like that, you're going to be at your lowest, and you're still going to be thinking like you got some type of prize with sex. No, because you don't got the respect. Guys, let me tell you, when you're a simp, you're vulnerable. And what do women always say? I just want a guy to be vulnerable with me. No, they don't. It's a complete lie. That's why you be... To love and care, there's always going to be a degree of vulnerability. So again, if he's leading to the point and now if you're getting the impression that I'm telling you to not be vulnerable, to close yourself off, don't do that. Okay, don't become a muted robot. And being vulnerable isn't simping. Okay, it's inherently human. We need affection. We're, we're born with the need for it. It's a requirement. A baby that is born that isn't nurtured, that isn't held, isn't cared for, isn't shown love, dies. I'm not pulling that one out of my ass. They, they die. They need a mother's love. You can't just put a milk bottle in their mouth and that's the end of it. All right, That, that baby will pass away. We need love. To receive love, we have to show vulnerability. We have to open ourselves up to it. It's not simping. Being a simp just doesn't make sense, guys. When you're dealing with women, you have to be dominant. Damn near aggressive sometimes, assertive. Get your point across. Say what you mean, mean what you say. Be direct all the time, right? No. Don't be direct all the time. You have to have a degree of flexibility. So there's something my psychologist showed me once and that's okay. Yeah, I can say it. I go to a psychologist. I see a psychologist, one of the best psychologists in, uh, you know, Southwestern part of Victoria. I saw a Harvard graduated psychiatrist at one point in my life and had good conversations with them. So now getting back to the psychologist, he showed me this, this graph where we as human beings in generally lead with three different types of minds on the left sphere. We have the emotional mind on the right sphere. We have the reasonable mind. And when the two minds interject, we get the wise mind. So this guy with his statement of always be assertive. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You should be always assertive. You are going to be primarily logically driven, but the way he's coming across is always lead with your reasonable mind. Take no shit, shoot from the hip, be direct. Don't always do that because then you are just using the reasonable mind. And what do I say? The two minds that interject emotional and reasonable, you get the wise mind. So you don't want to be far leaning to one side or the other. Women would just in general, be far leaning to the left side, okay, to the emotional mind. As a man, you want to be in the middle, predominantly more on the reasonable side. And you should still have a facet of the emotional to get the wise mind. But never be direct. Don't be a jerk or an asshole. Be direct, lay a boundary, but let them know damn sure that if the boundary is crossed, there is a repercussion for that and stand by it as much as you don't want to enforce it. Since I started doing that a few years ago. Yeah, of course, stand by the things you do say. I'm not dismissing that. Stand by the, the things that you're assertive, the ground rules and foundations that you're laying and live by example. Live and lead by example. 
So if you're preaching something and you're expecting a certain behavior, you best be living it too. The quality of women I was able to meet, go with that respected me at the time, um, you know, whether it was just dating or whatever it was, just increased dramatically, all right? Boundaries. Don't be a pussy, don't be a pushover. Because you'll hear women say, oh, I like, you know, I like this guy. He told me, he put me back in my spot. As much as it sounds like bullshit, and it sounds like an obnoxious woman talk, which it is, it's true. It's not being obnoxious, it's not being abusive. It's laying a boundary and saying, hey, mm -mm, all right, shut down whatever bullshit she's doing when you don't agree with it, if it's reasonable to do so be a simp and i'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of guys in here that have had simp stories that's why i'm putting the stories in there so you can relate guys you still have to look back yo i was that fat piece of shit never going back to that again yo i was a simp as dude never going back to that again you know what i mean guys so we always have to you know keep our game tight but yeah being a beta male right the one thing about being a beta male that really gets you nowhere is like there's it's like a scent that comes off of you you know like when you're on semen retention and like the pheromones like a woman is just drawn to you because she can just literally smell it off you you know what i mean she can just feel the tension coming off of you right it's the same way with a beta male simp beta male simp mangina they know you are because even the way you look at them like, I'm telling you, I see it in passing all the time when I'm just being me, ignoring chicks. There will be a dude literally just like, <sighs> like, God damn, she find her ass fat. She That's like fucking every other dude out there. I reckon 99% of guys are that. Especially like I've done all these videos with making TikToks. I made like 150 videos or something like that about TikToks, guys. And no matter how deranged the chick is in her TikTok, you got an army of guys, armies of guys bending over backwards telling her how beautiful and lovely she is and how they'll man up and be the man regardless of what her rant is, whatever stupid thing she's saying. You will literally walk past them, walk past them guys and just be beelining for me, like looking at me or looking at somebody else selecting the area. Like I'm telling you, and I just be looking at dudes like, it's crazy how she just stole all your energy and like, you know, she didn't have to give you a drop of hers simp shit and you might even think oh he's just looking that's not being a simp that's being a simp bro that's being a simp because what if that lady no not even what if she got a bunch of options you don't know if she's married whatever you just look real quick and keep it pushing but for you to be like oh my gosh like she better never give me a chance to hit that i'm sure i think he's going just a little bit too far into it okay if you look at a woman and eat, even if it's for 15 seconds 30 seconds all right I'm not saying, and he's not saying you just start stroking it in the middle of the road, in the middle of the street, wherever it is that you've encountered her. There's nothing wrong with appreciating a good looking female body. As like I said earlier, a sexually active uh, man with normal levels of testosterone, libido. You look, maybe you stare. If that's the extent of it, like I said, if you're not stroking it out there in the middle of the park. A goddamn pervert. That's not sim shit. Just like if you're a good looking guy, you're at the beach, you got your top off. Even a married woman, if she's looking at that guy, it's inherently natural. She's not going up and sucking dude off asking for his phone number. It's human nature. All right, let's not translate human nature and a normal biological response into now, well, this is beta behavior. Sometimes, like, we can just, like, leave it at that, okay? You looked, you admired, you appreciated. It's the end of it. We don't have to make it a bigger thing than it actually is. Booting up the club. You're a simp, bro. Because she got a nice body. You don't even believe in yourself like that. Trust and believe. When you, you... I used to hang out with this guy um, for many, many years. And he'd always do that. would be just hanging out or whatever. be driving or drive past a group of girls. He'd be like, oh, my God, J-Man, did you see that? Oh... Fully pedestalize them. Like I barely, I didn't perv and I, I'll notice them. I never say nothing about it. I just have a look at oh, yeah, in my mind. Yep, yeah, good looking, whatever. I'm like, oh, oh man, I'll smash the back out of that. You know, you know, guys who say that, oh, I'll tap that. Oh yeah. What do you think? I'm sure they're just joking around again. Just like reading really far into it. I think I've probably been guilty of that too. Back in my days when I was in the army, just a young man fantasizing romanticizing and 
home with a bunch of young, you know, uh, AJ's army jerks, saying that shit to one another, receiving it, hearing it, talking about it. It's all in good stead. It's in good fun. No harm, no foul. Let's not make it a bigger thing than it actually is. What a loser. It's a lot of married guys who say those things to me too. Not well, that's different. I was more talking about young men, like I said, army jerks. Oh, we all got our shaved heads on the bus. First piece of ass, let's just call it. Not trying to be derogatory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all like, uh, you know, palms on the windows. Get that prop out of the way. Yeah, palms on the window, like licking the glass. <laughs> it's all in good fun, all right? But yeah, if you're a married man, again, though, you're not going to run from human nature, but that, that's totally different, all right? You shouldn't express your thirst even to your damn friends, all right, for other women. You got married for a reason, all right? You got married, especially if in the eyes of God, you got married. I understand naturally... Your gaze may shift towards other women, women, but you should only have eyes for the one woman. All right, that that's what you swore. Those are your vows. Live by them. They're arguably the most important vows you'll make in your life. And it all even comes back to then what I said. This video, live by example. If you can't live by your vows, if you're thirsting over other women, why'd you marry this one? having a crack at married guys it's just an observation i've made think about it guys when you've been on um you know uh stag dudes bucks nights whatever you want to call them wherever you're from bachelor parties whatever you want to call them and there's strippers there and they're doing all sorts of filthy stuff it's like you can always get these few guys that are seem normal same normal quiet kind of guys once you get a couple of beers in them and a few strippers around well, hey that has turned into filthy animals <laughs> you're like thirsty desperate disgusting almost graper type dudes they put in the comments if you've experienced something like that where you just see some behaviors from guys and you just like you never look at them the same again use language like that it exposes you guys treat women like they're normal when you're a simp you really you're higher prone to self-deletion or to delete her if she does something that you don't like or if she steps out of the relationship guys when a woman wants to step out of the relationship it's cool but see that's why a lot of dudes do that type of shit because they're not select off rip they don't listen guys do you feel like this about yourself i could leave my house right and go to five to six different spots like a grocery store i don't know target I don't know, just name five places. I am completely comfortable that if I make five approaches in each store, I can have sex with at least one girl a day. Like, that's how I... I don't know where homie's at. And I quite frankly don't know his situation and just sort of looking at my own or, or the average bloke, five different places, all so, right. Uh, maybe two different types of shops, grocery stores, down to the beach, at a park, and maybe at, at, at like a cafe or an easygoing bar, uh, diner. Guaranteed sex with five stops. <laughs> He's pulling that one out of his ass. He should. He should. Do a video on that, really. Do a video on that. I'm not. I'm not entirely convinced. All right, he's making it sound like it, women are really easy, especially when you cold approach them. Yeah, you know, the thing with cold approaches is, well, f for a lot of the time, you actually have to have some sort of context. And what a lot of these cold approach videos don't even show you is that they cut recording. And then they actually pull the woman to the side and then they'll be like, oh, no, this is this is actually for a YouTube video. And then she'll drop her guard and then she'll be more likely to contact the guy that cold approached her. But that might not be on camera. That might not be in the video. And then at the end of it, it's cut in that, oh, you know, this person so and so got back to me. I've got all these women that got back to me. But what they might not show is that after the camera shut off for that brief moment towards the end of the cold approach is that. He stopped them and said that this is for a YouTube video. 
And then you've planted all sorts of different seeds in the woman's mind. She's dropped her guard. She now understands why there was a cold approach in the first place. She might also start thinking, oh, is this like a big popular YouTuber? Am I going to be viewed by a lot of people? Women do crave attention, especially if they're out and about looking good. They've put in effort. Okay. So this guy with these, uh, I can go to five different places and he only like shot off two or even one. He's just like grocery store and pretty much doubled up on that. I, I don't know, brother. I'm not entirely convinced, but you should do a video on that. Five different places and guaranteed sex, he said. Not even a date, guaranteed sex. I feel I'm that select. Do you think most men so feel like down, that? Buddy? No, not at all. So the simp controls them. Not the masculine identity. The simp controls them, guys. And you must kill the simp because, guys, women will double back around for you. I don't care if it's 10 years from now or 20 years from now. Women are going to double back around and they hope that your mindset does not change. Like I always say. If they double back around, you know what they do? You didn't want me the first time. Piss off. I had that happen. Um, back in my monster hunting days, I remember this was one girl. Um, really attractive girl hungarian chick the long story short she fooled by and rejected me this was just this was years ago oh she was really rude to me about it actually i was on a dating website or something like that i can't remember now like rsvp which is one of those date actual webs before apps and then i you know in that time i got married divorced all that then i ended up back on the dating scene and i matched her there again and i recognized her she was still there 10 years later maybe even longer I met her, I, never, I didn't say I recognized her. I met her, put her away, got the job done, full blown monster hunted her. And then she goes to me, you look really familiar. And I said, yeah, I think we might have matched a few years ago, uh, but you rejected me. That's what I said to her. And then she went all red and she goes, I shouldn't have said that, should I? And I said, no. Nah. <laughs> and I never saw her again. And I wasn't gonna see her again anyway. I just had to put her on the, the chop list. But what the point I'm trying to make here is, if someone passes you up the first time, they go hoping they're going to come back. I'm yeah, they might come back. Again, it ties in with everything I say. If she comes back, perhaps you stimulated her all over again. You could use a metaphor like she detoxed from you when she wasn't into you or when she had enough of you. Maybe she saw you doing something else in a new light, in a new stead, new situation. It invigorated her, it stimulated her again. And women act on that. You got her waterworks turned back on. That's possible, and, and that's when they can potentially come back. I'm going to make a video about, um, which is sort of, sort of linked to this, but the, the no contact rule. Um, when you're either trying to get with a girl, uh, you've broken up or you've been dating and you've broken up or you've been in a long-term relationship and broken up, I'm going to talk about this no contact thing. So I'm going to do a video about that too. I'm looking forward to it. I actually have a bit to say on something like that, but we'll, we'll leave it for, for that sort of video. You guys. But yeah, if I don't want you the first time around, definitely don't take them back the second time around. The guys, there's a billion chicks out there. Don't go holding up your life just for one that you've put on a pedestal, <laughs> hoping that in 10 years' time she'll come back around when you improve yourself. Jeez, 10 years. Hey, so if you're going to be that dumb dude, you know, she's going to go out and have her fun, and you're going to be the simp waiting to give her a luxurious life or waiting to give her a fun time. Now, fuck all that. She got to earn anything if you even did want to let her come back. Now, like you know. I always say, guys, don't do it. And that's a part of killing the simp, too. When I tell guys to walk away from a woman when she's playing games with you, it's for a reason. That's killing the simp. When you're with a woman in a relationship and she wants to leave or she's just had it and she's done, let her leave, guys. That's a part of killing the simp, killing the inner beta. Because here's the thing. You can spend a lot of time alone, but if you do not perfect your game and take it out into the field, you're just going to get bitter, guys. You're just going to get bitter, and being bitter is beta. Being bitter is like, yeah, it's very beta, guys, because listen. It's probably like the biggest thing I've agreed with this guy throughout this en entire video. Yeah, like, don't be bitter. Like I said, I've, I've had relationships and end in train wrecks where I'd still have really strong feelings. I'd be in love. 
I'm not bitter, nor do I hold any form of resentment. Nor is there any resentment towards me, I truly believe that. It's a two-way street and sometimes there's a fork in the road. Things don't work out for whatever reason. But don't be bitter and definitely don't carry over baggage into the next relationship. What do I say about using the wise mind? Uh, putting protective measures in place. Taking lessons learnt on board. And I know a lot of people might think, well, your videos, you might be, you sound like you're bitter. And yes, I have had my heart broken. Yeah, he has been pretty emotive this entire video. There's just like a lot of... <laughs> like the dude's just got that energy and that's fine. That's his style. That's his character. I'm not knocking him for it. But he's very emotional mind. He's just really wound up about this. And maybe that's just because he's really passionate about what it is that he's saying. He's thought it through and he's just laying it out there with his type of character. That's all cool. But he's just, he's been a bit too, too much movement for me is all. Like, I think he'd be, he'd be better. And this is just my opinion. I'd, I'd, I'd take him on board even more if he just cut out all that erratic movement <laughs> and emotive expressions yes i'm very hurt overly emotive expressions i should say guess who's still so i love that when people say that oh you're bitter you're hurt who hurt you every man out there most men out there 99 percent have had a woman rip their guts out at some time in their life every guy has been hurt by a woman whether it's a a friend or someone who puts you in the friend zone or a wife or a girlfriend or a girl you really loved or whatever it is every guy is watching this content because they're trying to find out answers as to why someone was able to hurt them so badly and they never don't want it to happen again and they want to learn and improve that's why i never really think twice i've had people say people who have seen my channel and sent me emails and comments and oh you're just trying to scare men or you're being negative i'm not i tell men just what happens the truth so the men can make great decisions in their life and don't and they reduce the chances of having this sort of life-changing heartbreak that just takes a long time to get over if guys ever do because a lot of guys don't yeah it's um yeah but anyway this guy's talking about being a simp um let's play it a little bit more let's see what he has to say still thriving Shit, i don't give a fuck killing that beta if they want to call it like your butt hurt or your hurt fuck it I stand levels above other men because their mindset's not even like this. No woman is ever coming in between what wow. I got going on, and I wouldn't even know that unless I killed the inner beta. Guys, have you ever walked like halfway across town to go buy $80 flowers for a chick? Have you ever walked like an hour or two away to a mall or whatever to get your chick like a necklace or whatever before you even had a car like you were doing simp shit? Think back to the early years. We just disagree. I've bought a necklace for someone, sure. Again, it just depends on the framework. Where, where are you at in a relationship? There's a difference between buying a necklace on a first date and the necklace in a two-year relationship on, say, Valentine's Day or on her birthday as a Christmas present. Sure, I'd be inclined to agree with what the hell are you doing if it is a first date or a second or a fifth. But if it's a solid long-term relationship and you live together. Where's the harm in that? Where's the simping element in that? Especially if she's also doing things for you. I'm not again saying that you should expect things in return. But if she's doing things for you. If you've got note that she's gone out of her way a plethora of times. All right, to enrich your life. To uh, better establish your relationship. To have a connection with you. All right? She's done something to surprise you. It's not simping to, say, buy a gift as an expression of your love and care and that you were thinking about that person in that moment when you walked one or two hours to buy something because you didn't have a car. Yeah, guys, if you were doing shit like that, it's best that it happened then and you were able to cut it off, you know, flip the switch. But the Simp Chronicles means so much to me that... 
Oh shit, he had a cart. Yeah, I got no cuts. I just shoot all the way throughout. 90 minutes, two hours, you name it. If I got something to say, you best believe we're going to keep rolling. He cut. <laughs> Wasn't all one take. Tell this story because it's absolutely hilarious, guys. Like, you will get played out time after time after time after time using that same simp playbook. You know, that simp strategy. It gets you nowhere. It gets you walked all over. It's like, you're, you're a joke. Like, who are you? But just remember that, guys, if you've ever been in situations with an ex-girlfriend or a situationship and the attraction died, more so from her than you, it's because you were simping too much. It's because you were simping too much. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, I suppose it's the, the fidgeting, right? <laughs> just the pounding of the hands, like. Like, they're really trying to nail home the point that you're being a fucking simp. You on the other side of this lens watching me, you're being a fucking simp. You best heed my advice. <laughs> Sorry, just can't contain. And I don't agree either. All right. She, she didn't necessarily leave or lose the spark because you're simping. All right. It's not, not necessarily. She left because, again, I will now reiterate to further engrave my point, for lack of a better word. Women are inherently programmed to seek out greener pastures. The grass is greener on the other side. Whatever it is that you're doing, and you, like I said, might be doing everything that you believe is within your power. But the spark for her can just fade out. The light can go out and it can die. And you might think nothing of the pool boy cleaning your pool every damn week. Every second day. It's a tangible example. But he might be sparking her interest. Evoking something in her. She might be looking at the next guy, at a particular guy, and imagining... That she will get something that she's not getting from you. And she'll never verbalize to you, vocalize what that may be. You might think that you've done everything and everything. Anything and everything. But I think there's always something on the table for a woman that will just spark her interest. And, and make her go a little bit wayward and look elsewhere. So if you're not constantly evolving, you're not constantly leveling up, if you are just dead set, set in your ways, you best believe that spark will die eventually. That's why women constantly need to be stimulated. All right? They are inherently programmed to be freaks. Freaks in, in I say that in, um, in a loving way, really. Not a derogatory term, but they won't, they won't settle. They, they just can't settle. They're not programmed to settle. They'll always be looking around, looking for something a little better. And the only time that they'll truly settle is when they're forced to settle, okay? They, they realize that they're not going to now, they've reached a point in their life, they've reached a certain age. And then they can acknowledge that, mm, I'm not really going to get anything else now. My market value has fallen. The stock market has crashed. We're at zero. I can't purchase anything else i can't find another man all right that generally happens for women that are out of shape in their late 30s maybe late 40s some women will reinvent themselves reinvigorate and fire up their lives all over again even in their late 30s early 40s because they don't think that market value has hit zero all right they'll reignite the last remnants it right? be like a phoenix rising from the ashes to get themselves and say best shape possible even at that age even if they might not even be of age to bear children not of age but uh they may simply uh be infertile at that point it's a harsh reality okay and they'll still try to put their best foot forward to put themselves back on the sexual the dating marketplace to seek a man out so yeah otherwise women won't won't particularly settle to expect a woman to settle in her 20s and 30s she'll inherently be faking it till she makes it so she'll either time out where she'll get to that age where it's now too late for me to move on 
But you best believe that even if you're giving her everything, she'll always have her eye on something a little bit more. There'll always be some kind of behavior that you're doing that is no longer invigorating her, no longer sparking her interest, no longer keeping that flame burning. And there's always going to be someone else who might not have all the lavish things that say you may have, but the other guy might be providing something that's missing from your relationship with her. I've pretty much said everything on this topic and there's about three minutes left. So I think at this point, unless there's really any further need for me to interject, I will, but I'll conclude it here from my end. Thank you for tuning in to another rather lengthy video. If you have gotten to this point, let me know that you watched the video in its entirety, that you are hearing me speak right now at this point in the video. A like simply lets me know that you enjoyed the video and if you've got anything further to add, anything to recommend, anything that you didn't even like potentially, or I, I don't have a problem with people leaving dislikes. What I start to have a problem with is when there's, say, mounting amounts of dislikes on a video, and it's just because someone was triggered, but they can't rebut anything I've had to say. They can't shed some light on their perspective of where they may have had, might have had a difference in opinion. Every time this guy said something, every time G-Man has said something, not necessarily here, but in the past, it's not so much a call out, it's where I would challenge their opinion, not even particularly disagree or shut it down that this is a wrong opinion. I would just pause and give my own. So if you're that type of person that doesn't agree with me, that's what the comments are for. Please let me know what your opinion might be. Anyway, thank you again for being here. We'll let this video round out. There's about three minutes left. G-Man will take it away from here on in. And again, thank you. Sincerely, thank you for being here. And I hope you got something out of it. You got boring, you got too agreeable. Um, there's no mystery about you. I mean, that's the way men to work. You think that they would want someone who's stable, who's doing things for them, etc. That's why a lot of guys, they start looking for this content in channels like mine and others. Because you can't make any sense of it. You're like, it's just so backward counterintuitive um as to what you've been told and believe that you would think that a person the way they want to be treated they'll hang around if you did all those things i'm not saying all women are like that but the majority of them have that in them to some to some scale on the spectrum i've been told that blatantly by women the guys are too nice he disgusts them like like, like i made a video um the, the fake nice guy is a disgusting and whatever i made it very recently check that one out about fake nice guys finishing last and the woman in that um, video, which I was talking about, she was very, very blunt about it. I've actually had women in real life say the exact same thing in that level of bluntness to me. So that isn't a, a one-off occurrence from a bitter old lady. Um, this is something that is said all the time. He's too nice, he's boring. She's not happy because he's boring and he's not doing things with her and he's not getting the excitement and tingles going. And that's what women live for. And if you, too, if you bend over too much and become too agreeable and too nice become a little butler to her and do everything she wants and become a butler and a chauffeur and personal assistant and somebody who needs direction from her and approval from her you're gonna have a shit life and it's just good that i think there's channels out there like this guy like mine um like others that can try and encourage men to not hi hero because the reality is it's never going to get you anywhere in your life and i just told you about my friend larry you will never learn. And and so with Larry, after he, I told you he goes with all these women, it's been five or six women since he's been back on the dating market that have done the exact same things to him. Used him up, hurt his feet, probably cheated on him. Just, he's too nice to him. Like, he lives on one side of Melbourne and he drives to the other side of Melbourne to go and take girls out for dinner, like an hour, hour and a half away. Like, I'm literally talking one, one end of the city to the other. Um, the whole fucking, you know, whole metropolitan Melbourne. He's driving through and, and going there three times a week and taking them out, but they're never going to his house. They're never driving out to him. They're never doing things for him. He's running after them, spending all this money on petrol and dates and weekends away. Then they get sick of him after two or three months and fuck him off. It's no different to think about guys who have been able to be in a position where you can sort of pick and choose with, with women, right? Eventually, you know, you sleep with them a few times. You get sick of them, you get another one easy come easy go that's how a lot of these girls think easy come easy go okay i had this guy for a couple of months got bored of him easy come easy go back on a dating app 
Anyway, guys, that's probably going to be enough for me today. I don't even need to watch the rest of this. If you do want to watch his full video, once again, the video is in the description. Uh, go check him out. Um, if you have watched this far, thank you very much. See you in the next one, gents.